to the ball game. Top of the morning to you. Welcome to the sports page. Brought to you by the Armchair Quarterbacks on YouTube. Let's hit the ground running. And the first item up for bid here on the Price is Right is Wander Franco. If you missed the news, Wander Franco signs a 12-year deal with the Tampa Bay Rays. Worth up to $223 million, 185 guaranteed. And I know the first reaction from everybody is, where in the hell did the Tampa Bay Rays get $223 million? Not sure, but they've got them. And you've got other moves that have been made in Major League Baseball, some big moves. Steven Matz. Agrees to a four-year, $44 million deal to go to the St. Louis Cardinals. And the left-hander, who is in the prime of his career right now, six foot two left-hander. He had a 382 ERA and 29 starts last year for Toronto. Little surprised that he would take, honestly, what is considered a bargain bin deal. That is not what you would consider in the grand scheme of things, a great deal for a left-handed starting pitcher who had a pretty darn good year last year, 14 7 3 2 ERA, and pitched in the AL East. But that's what he signed up for, and the Mats deal could be worth up to $48 million and will receive a signing bonus. But look, if he's happy and the Cardinals are happy, I guess that's all that really matters. But I'm a little surprised because I feel like Matt's kind of sold himself short. I don't necessarily know if he is going to be a great pitcher for the long haul. He's had some questionable things happen for him. He is 30 years old. Will will be 30 years old when the season begins. So this deal will take him through age 34. But this is essentially Matt's payday. So we move on from that. And the other couple of significant moves made by the Yankees yesterday... Clint Frazier and Rognit Odor were both released. We'll see where they end up at. And this one was interesting because I felt like this was a hell of a get for the Chicago White Sox. They signed right-handed reliever Kendall Graveman to a three-year, $24 million deal. Pretty cheap considering how good Graveman is. In the World Series, I felt like he was the best reliever that Houston had. And... He was traded from Seattle to Houston at the trading deadline because he was going to be a free agent. He was 4-0 with a .82 ERA and 10 saves and 30 appearances in Seattle before he was traded. And like I said, when he came into the games versus Atlanta, he had lights out stuff. So I'm very surprised that he signed a deal that was that club friendly for that long. But at the same token, Graveman... And a lot of these other guys might be looking ahead to get in front of the lockout that seems to be looming. So we move on from that, from all the Major League Baseball chatter. And there will be no show tomorrow, obviously, for Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. We hope you spend it enjoying the day with your family. But we also know you're going to be spending the day enjoying some football. Thanksgiving is football. Football is Thanksgiving. At least it has been in, in my in my house, in my lifetime, we always had the ball game on. Even if we didn't care about who won or lost, we cared enough to put the damn thing on in the background. So if you're going to be watching these games, I figured today would be a good day to focus on the lines. And we are planning on having our Friday morning show. So we're going to have our Friday morning show, uh, 8.30 Eastern as always, and we will start the show off a little early, might do a sports page a little early to start the show off. I don't believe Tony's going to be with us 
because you know, new family, new baby. Seriously, Daddy's getting up at the butt crack of dawn to talk sports. But I do expect him to be with us on Saturday for the rivalry day. But Friday should be a fun day. It's going to be the Areola brothers. Justin's going to try to stop by. I haven't got a, a hard confirmation yet, but but the three of us will definitely be here. We're going to talk a lot of – there's a lot of college football on Friday. And we're going to talk that. Um, but your games that are going to go on tomorrow, if you're going to watch these things, you're probably going to put some skin in the game. Gambling is legal in most states by now. And so let's take a look at the first game. You're looking at the Chicago Bears and Detroit Lions. The Bears are a three-point favorite. That's not the number that I like. The number that I'm looking at that I'm going to bang. The Bears, Lions, over, under is 41 and a half. And I expect this to be a very, very low scoring game. These are two offenses that are, that are in the bottom seven of the National Football League in points scored. There's a good chance that you're going to get Tim Boyle versus Andy Dalton. And with the line being 41 and a half, that's the number that I like in that game. There's a couple other routes you can go. The total, the team totals for Chicago, it's 23. For Detroit, it's 19. Chicago is a three-point favorite, minus 160 on the money line. If you think the Lions might go out there and give it the old college try and get the W, they are a plus 140. There are talks about Nagy being on his way out, that he's going to coach his last game tomorrow. They didn't want to make the, the change right before Thanksgiving, but they're going to fire him after the game. He denies it. But we always know where there's smoke, and there's a lot of smoke coming from this. There's usually at least a little bit of fire. And I do believe he's going to get fired. I don't know if it's going to be right after the game. What if the Bears squeak out a, a, a W? Does he hold on for another week? I think the smartest thing, if you're going to make the move, is to make the move directly after this game, win, lose, or draw. And the reason being is you would give the – Chicago Bears staff a a break at that point because you're going to play tomorrow on Thursday and then the Chicago Bears will not play again until December 5th December 5th against the Cardinals so it'll be a week from Sunday and that would give them a full what, 10 days to get ready, 11 days almost to get ready, and I believe that that's the route they're going. The 430 game, well, we've got a fun one there. It's Raiders versus Cowboys. Raiders are getting 7.5 points at Dallas. The over-under is 50.5. Dallas is minus 340 on the money line. Plus 280 is the Raiders. 21.5 is the team total on the Raiders. 28.5 is the team total on the Cowboys. This one feels like it could be a shootout. So I'm leaning to the over on this game. I don't have a strong feeling on whether or not the Cowboys can cover an entire seven-point spread. I think that might be a little daunting, or seven-and-a-half-point spread. What you could do is throw them in the middle of a teaser. And if you took the Cowboys down to a minus one-and-a-half, then you have a couple of op options. You can either take the Bills to just cover, which is their six and a half point favorite on Thursday night. You could go with the Saints plus 12 and a half, which might be the better bet. Or you could just put that in your pocket and grab a game that you like better o over the weekend. But I don't know if I like Dallas across the board at minus seven and a half. I feel, I feel like it might be a little too much to give up. It's a short week. It usually lends to very bland defense and a chance for high scoring. And I it just feels like over the years that that late afternoon game has always been a traditionally high scoring game, the game that, that's played in Dallas. So I kind of see a light show. I, 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 I'm, I'm liking the, the over, and that's the number I'm going to take on that. The 820 kickoff. Well, that's Bills and Saints. Like I said, six and a half point favorite for the Bills. It is a 45 is the over under. 
This one I don't like that much. If I like this game at all, it's going to be involved in a teaser. The the Saints uh, team total, by the way, is 20 and a half, and Buffalo's team total is 26 and a half. So take that with what you have it, but I I don't like either one of those games. What I like is the over in the Dallas game, and in the Chicago game, I like the under. I think I think 41 and a half is a lot to get. Then we go to what I think could be the the most fun game of the entire day. And this is the one I'm actually going to be locked in on. It's the Egg Bowl. It's Ole Miss is at Mississippi State. It is a blood-hate rivalry. And I'm glad to see that it's back on Thanksgiving. For years, it was always on Thanksgiving. And then they moved it a couple of times. But it seems like it's back to stay. And this should be fun. Mississippi State is a one and a half point favorite. And that to me, what when I look at this and I see the one and a half point favorite, and then I see the over under is 62. Both team totals, by the way, are 30 and a half. I like I like Ole Miss. I like Ole Miss to, to get the W. I know it's a tough place to play, but I believe I believe that that is the team that is going to pull through and get the W. And maybe that's the situation. Maybe that's where you pair up your uh, your Cowboys if if you want to take the the Cowboys on the minus six teaser to tease the Cowboys down from seven and a half to to one and a half, and then you take the Rebels to a plus seven and a half. I kind of like that teaser, but that's where I'm at on this. I like Ole Miss to get the W. I don't see a money line yet with it being such a short porch there. You're probably looking at a money line. That's going to be pretty close to around 120, maybe 130 at the most. So that's you, you you do it by the way have another college football game on Thursday uh 330 Eastern Fresno State versus San Jose State not a big fan of those teams out west so I don't really watch a lot of that and I'm not going to try to steer you in the wrong direction but just to give you the numbers Fresno State is a seven and a half point favorite on the road the over under is 52 and a half and Fresno's team total is 30 and a half. San Jose State's team total is 21 and a half. If I was going to lean anywhere, I would probably take the over in this. But I to be honest with you, I'm steering way clear of it. And we will go over Friday's action when we do the show on Friday morning. We will be live on YouTube at 8:30 Eastern and we hope to see you there. And we hope that you have a great Thanksgiving. Real quick, before we walk out of here, we are going to try to do some uh, turn back time. We're not going to have time to be able to do all the birthdays and turn back time. But we are going to try to try to do some turn back time for you here. So, on this date in 1986, the Twins announced interim manager Tom Kelly will be the club's next skipper, the Minnesota native who replaced Ray Miller at the end of the season, will then compile a losing record of 1140 and 1244. But in a small market like Minnesota, Tom Kelly would go on to win two World Series championships. Both of them where the home team won every single game. They beat the Cardinals in 87 in seven games, and they beat the Braves in 91 in seven games. Never winning a game on the road in the World Series, never losing a game at home in the World Series. And, of course, those were some really great teams. There was some controversy. There was some absolute controversy when you look at the the uh, the push off of first base in the 91 series that absolutely should have been called that was about as dirty play as as there is. And then, of course, you had some other great moments in Twins history. Remember, th- those were, the, those were the, the Kirby Puckett years and Jack Morris and 
Tom Kelly on this date in 86 signs the deal to be the twins manager. And little did they know he was about to hit the ground running and win the world title the next year. We will see you on Friday. Have a great Thanksgiving. Y'all. Take me out to the ball game.